Hi, this is Tim Erden, author of Statistics in Plain English, and in this video I'm going to describe how to use Appendix A um, and interpret what the numbers mean. So this is the um, Appendix A has the values that show the area that's under the normal distribution or the proportion of the normal distribution that is associated with each Z value. So the way that it works is um, if you can picture the normal curve and you have a Z value over here of zero, so this is the Z value column, so you read down the column like that. If you have a Z value of zero, then the proportion of the normal distribution that is on the left side of that Z value is 0 0.50 um, or 50%. So 50% of a normal distribution will occur on the left side or below the Z value of zero. That's because a Z value of zero means that the Z value occurs right at the mean and in a normal distribution the mean is right in the middle of the distribution and it is also the median and that means it's the point at which 50% fall below and 50% fall above. So that's how it works. So what you do is you um, would calculate a z-score or a z-value and then you would look that up in appendix A, this appendix, and then you would that would tell you the proportion of or percentage of the normal distribution that would fall below that to the left of that. So suppose that we calculate a z value and the z value is 1.00 and you look over here for the portion of the normal distribution that would fall below or to the left of a z value of 1.00 and you see that it is 0.8413. So what does that mean? It means 84.13% of the normal distribution would be expected to have z-scores below 1.0, uh, at 1.0 or below. And that means that if you consider the entire norm normal distribution is 100%, then 100 minus 84.13 would leave you with point. 1587, and you could say 15.87% of a normal distribution would be expected to have a z score of 1.0 or above. And that is how you interpret the numbers that are in this, um, this table or this appendix. Now, what if you don't have, um, what if you have a, a z score that goes beyond one decimal place, beyond the tenths place? So instead of having a z-score of 1.0, say you have a z-score of 1.06. That's where these values up here at the top of the table come into play. So first, you find your z-value of 1.0, which is over here. And then you find the column of 0.06, which is up here. And then you find the intersection of this column and this row. So we go down that column until we get to the z value of 1.0 row. And the intersection of this 1.0 with 0.06 is right here. And that tells us that the um, proportion of the normal distribution that we would expect to score, have a z score of 1.06 or below, is 0.8554 and the proportion that would be above 1.06, a z-score of 1.06 would be 1 minus 0.8554, which would be, let me do the math, 0.1446, I believe. I'm trying to do that in my head. So um, that's how you use this appendix and to find the proportion or percentage of the normal distribution that falls below or above any particular z-score. Now, if you look, uh, Appendix A is divided into two parts. The first part 
goes up to a possible high z-score of 3.09. That would be this value right here. 3.09 um, would have uh, that proportion of the normal distribution would fall below a z-score of 3.09. The second part of the um, Appendix A is for um, very large z-scores. So we'll take a look at that now. Here's the second part of Appendix A. And as you can see up here, it says far right tail probabilities. This means um, when you're looking at very large um, z-scores. And the smallest z-score in this portion of Appendix A is 2.0. And you can see it goes up to z-scores of 9.5. Um, there's very, very little to the right of these large z-scores. So um, in the first part of Appendix A, the part that we described earlier, that was showing you the proportion of the normal distribution that would fall to the left of a particular z-score, below a particular z-score in a normal distribution. In this little bit of Appendix A, it shows you the proportion of the distribution that would, ex that would fall above or to the right of a particular z-score. And you can see it's very, very little. If we have a z-score, for example, of 2.2, the proportion of the normal distribution that would fall above that or to the right of that z-score would be 0.01390 meaning less than 2% of the normal distribution would fall above a z-score of 2.2. And it just gets smaller and smaller from there as the z-scores get larger and larger. So that's how you read um, Appendix A, Part 2. Uh, this here shows you what this means is the probability of getting a score that's between the z that is given and infinity. Here's the z that is given, say 2.2. The, prob the probability or proportion of the scores that would fall above 2.2 to the end of the normal distribution is this, 0 0.01390. Again, very small. So that's how you read Appendix A. It takes a little bit of practice, but then um, it becomes second nature.